Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bowhunter Chronicles podcast brought to you by Tacticam. Tacticam is by far the easiest way to begin filming your hunts. Whether it's the budget-friendly solo or the 4K 5.0, there's something for every budget. So check them out at Tacticam.com. This episode, we've got John back. These episodes are kind of discombobulated. Um, I didn't know if John was going to be back for this one. Hell, I didn't even know John was back until uh, the day before uh, we actually had this podcast scheduled. Um, Ed over at Base Map said, hey, we're doing this uh, Base Map promotion where we're going to give everybody a week free of the Base Map Pro uh, with the Hunt Wind uh, upgraded uh, weather, um, some really neat features. We talk about that here on the podcast, um, but that's running from October the 8th until the 14th. So you can sign up, even if you've got regular base map, uh, you'll have all of the free functionality uh, of the Pro from the 8th, well, th- from the 8th to the 14th, um, you're, you're going to get that. If you sign up, let's say that you signed up for the free base map on the 13th, you'd still get a full seven days of the pro. So uh, we wanted to get this podcast out uh, to give you guys the best chance to um, you know, check the whole thing out for free. Um, I do have another podcast that's recorded uh, with Parker McDonald uh, about um, – transitioning to public land um and uh, that one was supposed to be this week but i had to bump it for uh this uh base map promotion and uh john's back it's the first time that i've even seen him in a month so um pretty cool there's a lot of his elk hunt mixed in here um with uh some of those features and functionalities of of the new base map and um Tonight, if you're listening to this live, uh, you know, or, or uh, on the Wednesday that it comes out, it's going to come out uh, Wednesday the 7th, um, I'm going to go live on Instagram and we're going to do our Patreon giveaway for um, the B-Sticks uh, for one of those Tacticam solos that I mentioned in the intro uh, and a free year of Base Map Pro along with some swag um, and they do that for our Patreons every quarter. So, we're going to be giving those away, and then uh, if you did go and uh, like the post that we had on Instagram and follow along with our YouTube page, uh, I'm giving away the, that set of Hawk Helium sticks, and we'll be doing that at the same time. So all of that will be uh, given away. And so if you if you want to know how to get in uh, on some of those giveaways and uh, other things that we do uh, for our Patreons, you can go check out patreon.com forward slash Bowhunter Chronicles podcast, or you can check out, uh, there's a link to it on our website, Bowhunter Chronicles podcast.com. And, and Patreon is basically just uh, crowdfunding for the podcast. So it allows us to, you know, uh, try out new gear, uh, buy uh, equipment that we need uh, for the podcast, more filming. You know, I mean, we've got so much stuff coming up right now. Um, you know, Ernie, if you saw our post on Instagram, Ernie is already tagged out. He shot two bucks in one morning, uh, left all of his cameras in the car uh, because it's not part of his um, routine yet. Uh, Frank has already um, made a bad shot on a deer, videoed it with the Tacticam. Uh, we got to look back at it. We called in a dog, um, non-fatal hit. And uh, the same morning that Ernie tagged out, uh, Frank missed a buck as well. So, and he videoed that on Tacticam. So, <laughs> Frank is doing a great job. Ernie's doing a piss poor job of uh, recording the hunts. But, um, you know, you can you can check all of that stuff out on uh, on our Patreon. And like I said, that just helps us. And uh, it also funds all of these giveaways. So, you know, we put most of that money. You know, almost entirely back into, uh, you know, giving stuff back to the patrons. We do as much as we can for them. So we really appreciate them. Um, you know, so if you want to help us out, you want to help the podcast grow, you know, let us do more things. Uh, you know, so we've got more content for you guys. You know, you can certainly check that out on Patreon. If you're like, nah, 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 just get to the podcast. Come on, we just want to hear the information. 
no big deal. We appreciate every single listener. Uh, we just ask that you do us a favor and you just tell somebody else about the podcast. Um, you know, that's that's how we kind of grow uh, word of mouth is, is best. Uh, but if you really like the podcast, you can leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify or Pandora or however you're listening. And um, that also helps us. Uh, it puts us in, you know, in front of more people as well. So uh, if you could do that for us, we really appreciate it. We get thousands of downloads and we've got less than a hundred reviews. So if you could help us out with that, we really appreciate it, but we really do appreciate every single person that listens and wanted to get this podcast out for you. So you have the opportunity to try all the features on base map. Um, we really like it. Uh, just coming back from out West, we used it quite a bit and, um, with this new hunt wind feature for uh, white tail hunting, I've been using it every day trying to figure out where these bucks are, why they're bedded on certain winds, why they're showing up on camera. Um, you know, it is really uh, kind of invaluable to be able to even see it on the screen with the the smoke and the wind and everything, the way that they've got it set up. So uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy this podcast. Definitely check out Basemap, and you can use the code Basemap. Uh, you can use the code on Basemap.com of Chronicles and save twenty percent. So it gives you the uh, Basemap Pro for twenty four dollars for the year. So um, check that out this week, and uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> All right, everybody, Adam and John back with another episode of the Bowhunter Chronicles podcast. And, you know, I I recorded the one with Ernie and Frank uh, when we got back from Colorado, and uh, it seemed like forever since we've done this. John, how long has it been since you've done a podcast? I was actually curious if you were going to come back uh, for this one. Yeah, well, I, I was gone for three weeks, so either my wife was going to divorce me or, or you were, so... <laughs> Uh, well, so I had to get back. <laughs> and I was thinking, you, you know, but were you going to come back for the podcast? Because, you know, you don't, you know, you, your, your words, if we were to go my words versus your words on the podcast, mine are probably like in the millions and yours are in like tens of thousands. <laughs> so if you're like, well, you know, it's been about a month. Um, I don't really need to do this anymore. I'm, I'm spent. <laughs> You know, I was thinking, I'm like, he don't really need me, <laughs> especially <laughs> after the trip I just had. Like, I just, I pretty much took over the world's worst bow hunter. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you loosed a whole bunch of arrow, a myriad of arrows. Yeah. I, I, like, I did not. At one point, my quiver was just all <laughs> wrecked shit. So, <laughs> but that's another podcast for yeah. another day. Um, like I said, I didn't know if John was going to make it back for this one or, or what, uh, we're kind of wedging this one in here in the middle, um, cause we got something special for you guys. Uh, the listener, uh, we have Ed Graham's back, uh, from base map, um, with, uh, you know, we're going to talk about some of the new features that base map has, but they're rolling out, you know, a week full of free pro base map for you guys to try out in the, uh, the features that are on Pro are are really pretty sweet, so um, wanted to do that just because of the time frame, and you know we have the ability to do it. So uh, we're going to get this out here so we can show that to you guys. So how are you doing tonight, Ed? Man, I'm doing great. It's been it's been a while since we talked. Right, and I mean, and, and boy, boy, the world has changed since the last time we talked. Oh my God, uh, I'm going to do it, <laughs> uh, and I shouldn't even say this on the podcast because. Um, Somebody else is going to beat me to it, but this is what I'm going to do, right? And I hope it's not illegal. Um, <laughs> so, because I, th- I feel like it could be, but I want to make a big sign for the front of my window in my car, right? Park it on public land and say, I have COVID. I've been all over these woods <laughs> for your own safety, hunt somewhere else, right? Uh, I mean, I. What? Well, you know, obviously you guys were out west also. You know, I was out in Wyoming. You guys were in Colorado, Montana. And I, I'm i pretty certain you didn't find the boogeyman out in the woods. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I, no. I mean, I, I was in Jackson, Wyoming, and, man, they were crazy with the masks. I mean, I saw people in Teton National Park with nobody around them wearing masks. I saw people <laughs> riding a bike trail. Nobody 
on the bike trail, but like a husband and wife wearing masks. I was in the Dallas Fort Worth airport and uh, I was sitting there and I was just, you know, on my phone and I'm looking around and nobody's got mask on at all. So I took my mask off and uh, just continued doing what I was doing. And the, this pilot, uh, he was just going back home to, uh, he was going to Grand Junction, Colorado, which is where I was flying into. And he yep. walks over to me, gives me a thumbs up, and he goes, fuck those sheep. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and when I got to Colorado, like, I got a text from the guy that was picking me up, and he said, you don't need a mask here. <laughs> like, like, there was no masks at all in Colorado, where I was at. There was nothing. Same thing. Yeah. I was in Bozeman, and, uh, well, for that's where, like, my home base was there. But everywhere we went, you know, the little towns, it was just, like, business as usual, no masks. Like, I talked to my buddy. I'm like, hey, do we need to bring a mask? He's like, what? The only place you need them is if you went to, like, REI in Bozeman or, <laughs> yeah. or downtown, you know, like, stuff like that. But Oh, man, I tell you what, the uh... – Jackson Hole of New York City was crazy with them. I mean, I, I got a lot of dirty looks. I, I wore it when I went into a store. As soon as I'd come out and be outside, I would take it off. And man, I got so many dirty looks. It's like, I'm outside. I don't need to wear it. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, how the times have changed since we. Uh, yes. Since like, we... like I said, it's been a while since we talked, and the world has gone crazy. So, where are you guys at in your your season right now so you started like what september 15th something like that yeah um you know so in wisconsin our season opened up i think it was on the 12th it opened up when i was in wyoming um i i haven't been in a tree yet i'm i probably won't be in a tree until the first week in november just because i've got freezers full of meat now after my trip to wyoming oh I just rub um, it in huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah freezers full of meat um <laughs> I mean, I'm getting a lot of pictures of bucks, but everything's at night still. Um, you know, I, to me, I, I believe that, that the October lull is a real thing. So I'm not, I'm not going to get out to where I hunt. I mean, it's like three and a half, four hours away until, you know, the rut kicks in. Man, I, but yeah, we've been, we've been open for weeks. So my, uh, our season opened October 1st. My wife had a women's weekend and I, you know, we got, some of those new uh the tacticam reveal cell cams i put it out at this piece of property super heavy pressure you know not probably as pressured as where i take john but you know there's still a lot of guys <laughs> um and it, daylight pictures of buck after buck after buck after buck and i'm on okay. daddy duty and uh so my daughter and i actually went out there and glassed up three different bucks you know and you know if you follow along like i'm not going to be all that particular on this one or that one but there were some i mean there was there were bucks in there that john would shoot at now i can say that's fun um <laughs> hey i did kill some but so oh uh, i came back i had to buy a new freezer so there all right this wasn't full it wasn't as big like right. a college one i just got the little one yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh we'll man. get to that story that that does uh pertain to the my base map so <laughs> so so what's new with base map ed what's uh what's what's been going on over over on your end oh man since the last time we talked um I mean, we've had some improvements you know in the app and things like that but our, our big thing you know we definitely tried to focus on the whitetail hunter this year and we came out with something called hunt wind uh basically an in-app wind check you know, you can check the wind anywhere in the world. Um, you know, if you're a free basic member, you can check it. You can't check future, but you can check what it is right now. Uh, if you're a pro member, you can check it anywhere in the world for, you know, up to 24 hours. Um, you know, you basically just put a little, a little icon on the, on the map and it'll show you what the conditions are right now and up to 24 hours from now. Um, I'm sure you guys have played with it. Like the smoke animation is kind of cool. You can see, in a sense, where your where your scent is blown to. So you can try. You know, for us whitetail guys, scent is huge. You know, try to figure out where you should be, when you should be there, uh, based on on the wind and weather conditions. And and with that, you know, there if you if you drop a marker, that's a tree stand. You know, you and I talked about this. 
drop a marker that's a tree stand. Now you can set your ideal wind, you know, for that location. If you're sitting on a food plot or, or whatever, you know, the way the wind should be blowing to hunt that spot. And now it'll tell you in the app, yeah, today's a good day. You know, tomorrow's not good. Four days from now is really good. Um, so it's kind of some predictive uh, weather forecasting, you know, for when you should be in what stand. Yeah, I've been messing around with it, and we were just uh, talking here a little bit before the podcast. John, you just kind of stumbled across it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I was, like, in the dark out there in Montana, so <laughs> I didn't know all the new stuff. And I was like, well, what is this? How did I, I'm like, huh. I didn't know how I'd hit it, but then once I talked to Adam, yeah, I was, I've been playing with it. Yeah. So. Uh, I think it's pretty neat because, like, when you set it and you look at, like, when you check the wind, there's a little slider at the bottom, and it kind of tells you, uh, like, hour, I think it's every two hours, or maybe I got big yeah. fingers and it just slides. But it's telling you, and I like it that it's this risky wind. It's like, yeah, right. that's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> that uh, Just off wind, you know. I mean, and, and, and really, that's, what, you know, for a lot of the public land guys, you know, that when you're trying to get super aggressive, like, that's kind of what you're looking for, you know. That ideal right. wind is kind of like bullshit for us because it's like, you know, you said, well, if you're going to set up on a food plot or something, it's like, yeah, we're setting up on like a deer or like a trail or something. It's not like, you know, there's an, there's an ideal wind for morning and evening, but not like, I don't know. what. Yeah, you're, you're going to want that like risky wind because that, you know, hopefully that buck's coming in right on the edge of it. And right. You know, that's you know, and and you know, a couple weeks ago, we you know we had an update for our weather center too. You know that kind of ties all this in. You know, our our old weather information was kind of crappy. It just showed averages. It didn't show you hourly. It didn't show you what the high and low temperatures were. It was just an average for the day. Well, now we we changed that. You know, to give you true forecasting for up to seven days, um, and then in there. You know, if you look, it's actually going to list all your stands by day, you know, that you have set with uh, with the ideal wind. And it'll show you which stands you should be in on that day. Um, you know, so it, it's really a lot of information for the for the whitetail guy looking at, you know, where they should be and when they should be there. Um, you know, but yeah, to your point, you know, public land guys, they're, they're, they're hunting on the edge anyway. So, <laughs> you know, showing that like risky wind. Yeah, you hope that buck is... is stupid and and taking a chance and that you're in the right spot at the right time well i mean and uh, the the other part of that can say is that you the hunter are just stupid enough to be right there on the edge (laughs) of like you know or you know we you know we like to use the term aggressive right not (laughs) not but there's a bunch of other information i was looking um i saw you know our buddy greg litzinger the bow hunting fiend on instagram if you're following along um, he was talking about, you know, he's out in Jersey and hunting a lot of the tidal stuff. And so uh-huh. that, that also has the moon phase and like what the tide is going to be at like different times and stuff. Right. So yep. there's mm-hmm. a bunch of information in there. Yeah. Barometric pressure. Um, you know, everything that, a, everything that a whitetail guy is looking for. And what, I mean, what was the catalyst for that? Or like what sparked that whole side of this you know compared to you know because when we talked the last time you were just saying okay well you know there's other mapping software out there they've got big marketing and they have no competition right right so right you guys stepped in and said all right well we're gonna do we're gonna do that better and we're gonna do that cheaper and it would be very easy to just say you know now we've accomplished that why reinvent the wheel with something you know so so such a big undertaking. Well, you know, since we talked, I mean, we've definitely done a lot of marketing on our end. We've, we've signed with a lot of um, whitetail specific partners, you know, bone collector, North American whitetail, deer and deer hunting, et cetera, et cetera. I'm hurt that we're left out of that. Ed. <laughs> well, Hey man, you guys, you guys are killing it for us. I told you that, <laughs> um, you know, we had, we had a different direction we were looking at going and, and I kind of stepped in and, and said, you guys, you're, you're missing the ball here. Um, you know, whitetail hunters outnumber, they outnumber the, the Western hunters by a lot. I mean, you and I, the three of us can agree whitetail is king. Oh, yeah. You know, 
if if you're if you're listening to me and you're out west and you're an elk hunter, look, I love elk, elk hunting as much as you, but whitetail is king. Um, so it's we need we needed to improve the app to focus kind of on the Midwest and, and Eastern Southeastern hunter that's chasing whitetail because there are so many of us, you know, so what can we bring into the app that's going to appeal to that hunter? Um, you know, there's obviously so many different apps out there. I mean, our big competitor doesn't have anything like this. They focus too much on the, on the Western guy. You know, so we wanted to bring something to, to the masses basically. You know, something really cool at an affordable price. And, and you know, I'm not going to tell you what we're working on, but this is just the tip of the iceberg for, you know, the whitetail folks. Now, one of the things that I've noticed um, throughout this, and, and, you know, it kind of maybe goes back into that reinventing the wheel thing, um, but the the layers, right? So there's a million layers. I mean, there's not. I don't know how many there are, but they're, it's double digit layers. It's over, over 800. Yeah. So when you're downloading maps or when you're trying to look at it on your phone, it can be like somewhat overwhelming. Right. Um, and now you're, you're adding a whole bunch more, uh, things to it. Like, is there some sort of like a uh, tutorial or I don't know, like recommended or, you know, maybe that's something that you guys can, can be one of uh, your next things is like, if you click whitetail, it would go to, this is what you want, you know? Cause I mean, it, it is, like I said, when you're on your phone, it's like, holy shit. Like I could, I could click on these all day. I can be lost in this app real quick. Right. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we do have some tutorials on our YouTube page, but I will admit that they're a little dated uh, because we've changed our, our user interface a little bit since we did those videos. Uh, you know, but we are looking at again kind of changing things to make things a little bit more user friendly and a little bit more intuitive um i mean the biggest complaint we get is man i can't find anything i can't figure this out i've been using on x for five years well that's because you've been using on x for five years and we're not on x okay right. we have the information it's just a little bit it's in a different place um yeah i mean to your point it can get a little overwhelming with the amount of information we have you know, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff on there you're never going to click on and use, but you know, you can scroll through it and see what's there. Um, but yeah, it can, it can get a little crazy. I mean, I had, I had layers on out West that I would never have on out here, like checking wildfires and, and crap like that. Um, yeah, John and I were right in the middle of all that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It, It was, I didn't have any fires by me, but damn, it was smoky out there. Yeah. I have, our first, our A, our A pick was on fire, like when on my way out. So we had to switch up on the way. Oh, and, man. And it's actually like, well, let's see. I was out there for three weeks. I, I got back to Bozeman like on day 15, I think it was. So I was going to try to get back up there. And we drove up and it was still closed, like the trailhead that Jeez. we had picked was still closed and the firemen like the forest service service they were all parked right there that was like their command post (laughs) like like well i guess that's still off limits so yeah but i mean i would i would say as a as a public land whitetail hunter you know obviously having the layer on that shows the the boundaries and the names of the public land um you know maybe the the trails you know, depending on if you're going in on an established trail or something, like having the trails on, um, maybe even maybe even the private land if you you know got to track something, or in the roads. I mean, there there really isn't too much that you need on in the Midwest because we don't necessarily have to worry about hunting units. You know, at least in Wisconsin, we don't. I don't know about Michigan. You guys uh, have to worry about like we have hunting units, antler point restrictions. Uh, per, okay, per county. Um, but other than then a little bit of the CWD stuff, but okay. other than that, it's pretty standard. Yeah, so I mean, there's only you know there's only two or three layers that you may have on at any one one time when you're when you're actually out hunting. I, I think that if you're sitting at home playing with the app or online and doing some scouting, you probably have more stuff on. But realistically, when you're out there, there's only you know two or three layers you really need. Yeah, 
I, I think that's where I get like a little bit. I don't know, not, not like confused, but like on the computer, like all those layers, like I l- absolutely love it. Like being able to go back and forth and and see and like, well, let's look at the train. Well, let's look at it in three D. Let's look at it here. Let's look at it there. And then, then when I get on my phone, I'm like, oh man, what was the one with the you know, and, and, and all that. And then when, when you download them and I've used like one of the ones I thought I would never, ever use is you've got all the, the lakes and stuff on there. Yeah. Well, like I, this year is the first year that I had a boat and, uh, I was going to my friend's house from the boat launch, which was like six miles, like in this little bayou around the corner. So I took base map out and I did at that point, I didn't have my a, a graph on my boat like i had just bought the boat and i'm like oh i'm gonna go see see mark you know and i had base map and i just made a line like from here to here to here to here i pinned his house and then just made like you know where i needed to go and and i was like my other friends they they got lost on uh, uh jace just got a boat they got lost on muskegon lake in the dark and i'm like <laughs> you need to check out this app because it tells you like wh- right where you're at where you need to go where you parked <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so i mean yeah my my go-to uh map i mean i love like the satellite imagery but i like you know especially out west even here i like to have the contour the topo lines on there and then i like to have the good topo map too just by itself Mm -hmm. right yeah so those are those are my two go-to you know, and obviously we've got a couple different topo maps and we have, you know, ones with like the satellite with topo, the shaded relief. I like the shaded relief one. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, cause it kind of shows, you know, it shows a little bit of the contour, a little bit better than just the lines. And, you know, I feel like, okay, that's going to show me where shadows are when the sun is up and things like that. Yeah. So speaking of John and the way that you use base map, so you actually use base map while you were out elk hunting and it it killed you your mule deer in the weirdest of scenarios possible yeah so uh, it's a long story but i'll try to shorten it up so that morning uh that morning i had a plan to we had located some elk the night before uh, and we where we're at there was like the lower mountain road that down through the basin and then there was the upper mountain road and so my buddy Mark had already killed his cow the day before. So he got a little drunk that night and we're like, well, <laughs> hey, you got to get up and at least park up there so no one else comes in from that area. I mean, we're kind of putting a block on, but we were hunting up to that point. So we, my other hunting partner, Eddie and I, we started at the lower end. We hiked up. We got into the elk right away. It didn't work out, but in the, in the mix of it, I set down my GoPro and I'm like, Shh. and I forgot it there. So we ended up chasing the elk up the mountain and then, you know, obviously we couldn't keep up with them. They just were, they, they were headed to where they wanted to be. And we got up to Mark's truck. And so I'm like, well, I know where it's at. I mean, I got my track. I had my track on the whole time of base map. So I'm like, I'm just going to, I'll, instead of going back down and hiking back up, I'm just going to walk back that way. So I started heading back that way and end up running into a covey of grouse. I was like, shoot, I, the first two were like on the ground. And then there was a couple in the tree. And I, so I got out my grouse arrow. Well, the first arrow, I just launched it into oblivion, like <laughs> completely missed the bird. I'm like, well, I was too close and I shot underneath it. And so what I did, I was like, well, it's got a lit knock and was, I'm like, yeah, I'm I, I hate losing arrows for one. So anybody that knows me knows I'll sit and look for an arrow for an hour. If I break one, that's one thing. But if I lose it, I got to try to find it. So what I yeah. did is I know I did some testing during the summer with my base map. I was up in a field and I, I know that my arrow, like if I had a 20 degree angle, I could shoot it and it would go about 340 yards. So I got back. Well, I ended up, I grabbed out another arrow, grabbed out one of my hunting arrows and I shot and killed the grouse. So I'm like, okay. Got the grouse. Now I'm going to go find my arrow. So I did a line of sight, and I did it, I got on there and did the line, and I, I drew the line out like 340 yards, and then I pointed in the direction it was like I, the arrow went. 
So I saved that, and then I was just started walking that line. Well, it brought me up on the side of the mountain. I'm side hilling, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm looking around for this arrow, and then I looked down at the bottom of the at the base of the mountain there, and there's a couple mule deer sitting there. I was like, shoot. So <laughs> I'm like, and there was a couple small ones, and they got up and they seen me, you know, and they got up and they just started to kind of wander off. I'm like, whoa! All of a sudden, a big doe jumped up down to my right so she ended up coming out 35 yards and i ended up getting a shot and i killed her so i was like well shoot if i wouldn't have been following that line you know <laughs> looking for my arrow i would have just walked down through the you know on the other side and i wouldn't have been side hill and i was you know so it ended up working out good so i i have to give base map a little bit of credit <laughs> on that kill because that's awesome but well, i didn't the, find the, the arrow important question is, did you find the arrow and did you find your gopro I, I I found the GoPro. I did not find the arrow. After after I shot her, I ended up, it was a, I shot her back a little farther than, you know, that was, I was having some issues with my bow and shot her a little bit back. So I gave her some time and then I didn't want to be dinking around looking for an arrow and, and jump her up. So I just kind of scooted back out and around and then went right up to where my GoPro was. It was, you know, I followed the map right to it and then, uh, then I went back down, got bound to my truck. Those guys were already there. We ate lunch, came back up, and then walked, you know, walked down, and we found her laying. And, and of course, we we're in grizzly country, so I didn't get any pictures or anything. It was just like, <laughs> all right, uh, it's been a couple hours, so let's get this thing, you know, cut up oh. and packed out. So, <laughs> oh yeah, you you want to hear a couple grizzly stories? <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh man. So you know, I was in Wyoming a couple weeks ago hunting elk and, and mule deer and you know i was in grizzly country and you know the kind of the greater yellowstone ecosystem where there's more grizzly bears than people oh yeah and no kidding on the first morning i think we woke up a grizzly bear i mean we were walking through the timber and all of a sudden we heard something bust out and we thought god oh, damn it we kicked the elk out we look over and it's still standing there and you know like my guide buddies like i i can't see it i don't know what it is i said well it looks like same color as an elk it's a light colored bear and then it started chomping his teeth and growling at us <laughs> like yeah that's not an elk and then it stood up on his hind legs and and mind you this thing is like 25 yards away <laughs> and you know so we both have bear spray and pistols drawn ready to go to war and it, you know luckily he took off running um but no kidding, the next morning, you know, we, we went kind of this, to the same area and we just got off off our horses, tied up the horses, and here comes a grizzly bear walking right to us. <laughs> and he again got to about 20 yards and, you know, it's just getting light enough to see him. And again, bear spray and pistols drawn, ready to, ready to <laughs> fight this son of a bitch. You know, it's like, it, it, I just could not believe it. And, you know, I killed an elk out there and with my bow and we ended up having to leave it overnight because we lost blood and it was starting to get dark and we didn't want to fight with a bear in the dark. And we went back in the next morning, took an extra guy with us and took rifles and I left my bow at camp, took my rifle. And we thought, we thought sure as hell we were going to find that, that elk with a bear on it. Oh yeah. But luckily we found the elk and they hadn't been touched. And I think we got that elk out of the woods in record time. <laughs> again, you know, it, it was good that we had three guys there, two guys cutting and one guy with a head on a swivel watching, oh, for, yeah. watching for Yogi Bear to come. So what were you carrying for a pistol? I had a 10 millimeter, a, a Springfield XDM 10 millimeter. Yeah, it seems 10 millimeter seems to be the kind of go to it. Uh... At least for, it, yeah, for people that it, have... you know, I, I bought a new, I had bought a new bino harness this year specifically because I could, the harness I bought, I could buy a holster that mounted on the bottom of the bino harness. So my pistol was always on my person, even if I dropped my pack. Yeah, that's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I mean, my bear spray was on my pack. So if I dropped my pack, I didn't have the spray, but at least I always had my, my pistol on me. Because this time, like, I, I wasn't necessarily afraid of many things that were in Colorado. We weren't in grizzly country. It wasn't, like, a big deal. And where John and I were in Idaho the last time, there wasn't 
Grizzlies either. So I just had a nine millimeter, but I carried a Glock seven or Glock nineteen the last time, and it was just too heavy. So I switched up this time to a a, a shield nine millimeter, and I didn't realize that the guy that I was hunting with may or may not be afraid of moose. Um, and I mean, I I I know like you know stories from back in the day that you know my my dad being walked down the mountain by a big bull moose and. Yeah. You know, all this stuff like, you know, they're, but these moose were like at like 40 yards and he's telling me, get your pistol, get your pistol. So, that, I mean, obviously <laughs> that gets me like a little bit amped up, you know, so I, cause I got my pistol out and, uh, now I'm looking at the thing going like, fuck, I don't think this has enough, you know, <laughs> eight rounds of nine millimeters, probably not going to really do anything with that moose. <laughs> like that was, a... <laughs> I was only carrying my nine millimeter, but I was carrying the seven, the big my big M and P and that has 17 rounds. I'm like, well, if 17 rounds don't stop a bear, then I guess I'm, you know, 17 rounds out of that. And my bear spray, I guess I'm bear, you know, bear meat for, you know, well, bear. well, no, you, you got, you know, I would joke. I think my, my 10 millimeter holds 15. So I've got 14, 14 for the bear and one for me. One for me yeah. <laughs> or I could just hit him with that thing and be like, yeah, honest, you know, from meat eater, uh, get exactly. up and, instead of the trekking poles, I could have hit just hit him with that heavy ass pistol. And <laughs> he probably would have turned and ran. But yeah, I mean it. It you know the the other times I've been out to the same location elk hunting in Wyoming, it was during rifle season, and you know I had bear spray and carry a pistol. I mean I figured well hell I got a big rifle, but going out there with a bow there was definitely a little bit more of a pucker factor and you know and two days in a row running into bear it was not. Not a fun experience. Yeah. Well, where we were at, um, they had like a double a double mauling or something last year, not far from where we yes. were hunting. Yes. The, the guy that got mauled by the same bear twice? Yeah. Yep. And uh, so and we had the, the first, that was at the second location we hunted. The first location, there was just all, we ran into hunters left and right, and no elk. So we got out of there and we're like, well. I guess we'll do, let's just go to grizzly country. Maybe there will be less hunters because there's grizzlies there. <laughs> and uh, the, that wasn't the case. There was a lot, a lot of freaking other hunters. But we did end up getting into elk. But the first day we were driving around, we got up uh, a little north of where we ended up hunting. And we ran into a couple guys. And they, they go out there every year. They were from South Dakota. And they were telling us about how. Oh yeah, last year there was a you know a double attack right up there, and then uh, there was you know the camp like so you see that corner right there. There was a camp right there, and they had a bear in their camp twice. I'm like, huh? Yeah, let's stay a little south of here. <laughs> yeah, but so definitely like 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 when Adam and I were in Idaho, you know, we'd get up four o'clock in the morning and hike up the mountain you know no you know in the dark and then we'd come back yep. but you know we'd be hiking back and get back at 11 like hours after dark well this spot that we were hunting i was like well i'm gonna walk out at gray light i'm not going out in the dark you know and then right and then i would end up cutting my hunt a little short too just to you know if it was a long walk i'm like yeah i'm really not comfortable walking out i'm a, you know especially I, we'd end up splitting up and so I'm like, I'm, I guess I'm a chicken shit, but I don't want to be walking out of here in the dark and run into a grizz. So, well, my outfitter who I was hunting with, he had one of his guides get mauled and killed by a bear two years ago. Oh, jeez! And and actually, the you know the day I shot my bull was the two year anniversary. You know when when his guide got got killed. So I mean, it was definitely in the back of his mind, and, and I could tell. You know, he he just wasn't he wasn't too you know, too excited about, about searching for this elk in the dark and cutting it up. And we didn't have our horses. We went in on foot and we knew it was gonna be a long night. So that's why we just decided to get on there. But, yeah. you know, yeah, like I said, two years ago, he, he had a guy get mauled and, and killed out there. Jeez. Now, it, it, I mean, I ended up, I had an opportunity at a nice bull, I end up shooting high on the back in the no man's land. And he actually bugled as he ran off. So I know that he was, you know, it was a non-fatal wound, but yeah. in, in the, it was in the evening. So 
I went down, found my arrow, you know, looked for blood. There was no blood. There was fat and meat on the arrow. So yep. I, knew, I knew it, it confirmed. I watched the lid knock just zip right through the top of his back. But the next morning, you know, we got, we went back in the same spot. I'm like, well, we, you know, we at least have to search this area just in case, you know. So we sat till like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And I noticed some birds like down off the mountain circling it was like well maybe i'll go check that out so yeah we ended up we started looking i started heading down the mountain and it was quite a ways and went down one come back up and as i was coming up i could see them birds and i crested the hill and i could see down and there was a bald eagle sitting on the top of this dead tree and i was like man how cool is that you know and <laughs> as i crested it even farther all of a sudden at the base of that tree there's a dead elk laying there, a bull elk. I'm like, and I went from the lowest to lowest to the highest. I was like, holy shit, I got him. Like, there he is <laughs> yeah. laying right there. I'm like, yeah. I can't believe it. So I like signaled to my buddy. He was up on the other ridge. And so I'm like, I whistled to him, you know, got his attention, waved him down. So I started like basically running down this. I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, dumbass. You know, there could be a freaking grizz sitting right there because it's up on yep. this little plateau. So I got down to the bottom and I, I'm like, all right, got my composure. I'm like, okay, I pulled my gun and then I started, you know, just walking up and I was making noise and talking just in case. Of course, you know, if a grizz is sitting, getting ready to, you know, eat lunch and I'm going <laughs> to disturb him, it's probably not going to be good. But <laughs> so I got up and then I waited for Ed to come up and he got his pistol out. And then we started, you know, looking at this bull. I'm like, man, it looks just like him. And, but I searched it over. I could not find a, uh, hole in him anywhere oh. and i'm like and it you know like his eye was poked out but they could the birds you know were on him so i'm like man what what are the odds that there's this bull here you know and it was like ended up being like 380 yards from where i shot mine yeah. and so i'm like well i don't know what to do but i'm gonna at least like start skinning them just to see if I can find, maybe the whole, you know, like I couldn't find them. I'm only shooting, you know, like the little, uh, four blade, uh, slick trick standard. So yep. small, small broadhead, but I ended up skinning out the whole side of him. We rolled him over and there was not one hole. The only thing we could find was when I, I ended up skinning his neck out, his whole neck was just all black, like his throat and everything. So I don't know if he had gotten in a fight and, like, got his throat crushed or got his ne neck broke, but there was not one wound in him, like, arrow hole, bullet hole. We looked at his huh. head like maybe someone shot him with a twenty two. It was the weirdest thing. So I went back to the lowest of lows. Like, here yeah. I thought I found my elk, and nope. But He had the COVID. <laughs> we dropped it. <laughs> I'm like, maybe he died of COVID. I swear I said that. I'm like, <laughs> but. Yeah, so I think Adam, that's the first time you heard about yeah. that part of it. Yeah, so. I heard that. Interesting. Yeah, like I said, John. I, I, for me, this is the first time I've seen John in a month. <laughs> you know, and so, uh, man, that's crazy. I can't wait to hear the whole. Oh, <laughs> and it was definitely. <laughs> and then you know, I ended up. I drove out by myself, so I had. I drove home, and you know, just being dumb, I ended up sticking around bozeman and i left bozeman at seven o'clock at night after i'd been up all day and just drove straight home and it ended oh, up yeah, taking me like 30 hours because uh -huh. i ended up i got over by mile city and i ended up there were so many deer on the road i was like well i actually i pulled into mile city and i pulled up my base map and i started looking i'm like well here's some national forest right down here and and then i went on and uh to the the zones and the units and i looked at it and it's like oh i can kill a cow or a spike so i'm like well so i took like a three hour tour <laughs> down <laughs> and got out to that spot and ended up doing like 30 miles of dirt roads got to the spot and i was like oh man i gotta go like another it was like another 10 miles north up into the into this national forest and i was like Screw it! I'm going home. <laughs> well, did you go? Did you go south out of Mile City towards Broadus? Yeah, I went straight yeah. south, and uh, ended up down. There's like that little patch of uh, national forest right on the yep. uh, Montana. Yeah, the Custer. Yep. 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 
Yep. And I've yeah, seen so many freaking monster mule deer. I was like, at, at one point I was going like, even on the blacktop, I was driving like 25 because they were just everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. But. that That's uh, that area, like the broadest Mile City area. That's where I go to chase mule deer and antelope at the bowl. Yeah. It's insane how many animals are down there. Oh, it it was like crazy. And that's kind of like when I when I uh headed out, I actually same thing I was I just looked on my base map and before I left I downloaded a couple spots right off of ninety four and for BLM and I got off I got out there uh like like three o'clock in the morning and I just parked, slept in the truck for a couple hours, got up, drove up to them spots and antelope right away seen antelope started chasing them end up having an opportunity at one and just couldn't capitalize on it but i mean just i had an awesome trip i filled one tag but should have filled three <laughs> but <laughs> but i won't change it man it was like the experience i had was just amazing yeah i, I mean it you know i had an epic trip it sounded like you had a great trip i mean it, it's it definitely been a good fall so far yeah, but I did have about 30 hours of driving where I just yeah. kept replaying that scenario with that bull over and over <laughs> and over and over. Yeah. I even, yeah, not good. Uh, when I got back to Bozeman on that, like, after the first two locations, I ended up, I brought my old Hoyt with, and I had my PSC. I ended up stripping everything off the PSC, rebuilt my Hoyt, ended up, my buddy's got a full shop. He's got a bow press and all that. So I ended up completely rebuilding my Hoyt, putting on new sight tapes and I was back in business with that one. And i have like had a hundred percent confidence in that bow. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> but I didn't get to draw that one back on an animal. So next time. Yeah. All the, uh, this, uh, grizzly and predator talk makes me think maybe you got it in there. Like with the, the go hunt stuff or the Eastman's or, or whatever, uh, you know, you got some draw information and stuff, but how about like predator attacks or like uh, predator <laughs> ranges? <laughs> oh man, we probably should. <laughs> I mean, you know, that would be helpful. Like, you know, I don't know in the lower 48 if there is a grizzly season or whatever, but no, nope, no, nope, but nope. if you had a range for the grizzly, like where you're clicking down, you know, like whitetail, antelope, mule deer, turkey, etc., if you had grizzly on there. What's you crazy, see, though, like... is the the grizzly, like, um, my buddy Ed out there, he has a friend that's a biologist, and we were, he got to talking to him, and last year there was an incident with, there was like 20-some cows that ended up eating some poisonous weed, and they died in this mountain range, and, like, grizzlies from, like, 200 miles around came, like, traveled to that location to feed on those carcasses. Hmm. That's insane. And I'm like, what do they do? Get on the cell phone? Like, hey, Ed, uh, we got we got some dead cows. You guys should uh, grab your buddies and get over here. You know, no, they don't have cell phones and, and Instagram. They just have their nose. And it's amazing that they could actually even find that. Like we were talking about, like, how how did they all migrate to this area just for this kill? Or, right. The it, grizzly version of base map. Exactly. Well, 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 Adam, Adam, you actually brought up a damn good idea, and and no kidding, I am going to pass that idea along. I think that having like a layer that shows grizzly ranges, because there are people that want to go out and hunt elk or whatever out west, and they don't want to be anywhere near them damn things. Yeah. And it's probably not a bad thing to have to have a layer that shows their ranges. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what it was when we were in Idaho. Is like you know, there's been like one grizzly and. 20 years here but like you know right here is safe and that like for for our first elk hunt you know john and i just all by ourselves i mean of all the things that we were trying to prepare for like not having to prepare for a grizzly was you know <laughs> was great <laughs> you know? yeah so, and, you know our our founder ceo who you know is the brains behind all the layers and stuff he lives in the panhandle of idaho and he deals with grizzly bears. So if I pass this along to him, he's like, man, that's a damn good idea. Well, you got our address right for the royalties. There you go. All that. <laughs> Send you the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. what, what's going on with the uh, 
with the free thing that you guys are rolling out. Yeah, so we're going to have a free preview of base map from October 8th through the 14th. So basically, you're going to get all the information, you know, every layer. Uh, you're going to get all the hunt research information, which which has the Eastman's MRS data. Um, you know, if you're on a on an iPhone or iPad, you're going to have the 3D mapping. Basically, you're going to get everything free for a week. So if you've got a if you've got base map now, just have a free membership. You're going to get it free for a week. Um, no matter when you download base map between the 8th and the 14th, you're going to get a free week. So if you download it on the 14th, you're still going to get a free week up until the 21st. Um, it's just kind of a way to, to showcase the app and, and the information we have and hopefully show how we're different and, you know, in our minds better than what the competition is. So, is a, a chance for you to to see everything we've got. I mean, like I say, I, the price is like phenomenal. But then once you get into all the other features, I mean, like I say, I've been I've been using it basically last year since ATA since we got that thing and we got a hold of you because I was like, you know, I haven't heard anything about this. Let's let's take it for a spin. And I mean, you guys have been doing a, a very good job since then on on the marketing. Um, and getting it out there, but um, I, I think all that information is, I mean, especially for Whitetail, because now, like, I'm literally, like, looking at, like, okay, well, I'm well, yeah, going, how, I'm how going back and forth between uh, spots, you know? <laughs> like, when, when I'm getting ready to go out, it's like, that's one of the biggest things, I'm looking at the weather, okay, oh, man, I can't hunt here because the wind, you know, so I'm looking at other apps and doing this, and now it's all integrated into one, that makes it even, and then you can, you can freaking basically predict it for you like oh this right. stand's good this stand like shoot that's right that's taking out the thinking out for you <laughs> you know like i said we you know we wanted to focus on the white tail markets just because it's so big you know and there's there's other arrows in the quiver you know that we'll be working on for 2021 um we had we had a bunch of stuff to kind of get done and clean up you know behind the scenes and you know, we wanted to have more features come out uh this year but you know, they, it, we decided if we're going to have one feature, you know, come out this year, you know, that was the one that we wanted to have. And then we're just going to kind of work on building on that for hopefully for next year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, a, I can't imagine what, what else you'd have in store because I mean, when I go out hunting, it's basically the weather. And if you could get some accurate weather, because these weathermen are bullshit. I mean, <laughs> well, it's not going to rain after three o'clock. Yeah. Whatever. Like wind's not supposed to switch oh yeah okay whatever um like it's just <laughs> that's the most frustrating thing is you get out of the truck and i think you're always going to have that adam I mean, <laughs> well i'm i'm just saying i mean well you know so we we ended up changing our weather provider you know so we've got more accurate weather than we had in the past and we also kind of incorporate some crowdsourcing stuff you know people that have weather stations in their backyard and you know so it just it just helps to give a better picture of what's really going on um you know i've been i've been asked about you know our, our, our hunt wind does it take into account topography or elevation well it, it doesn't because it's hard you know you guys hunt out west it's hard to predict that you don't know exactly when those thermals are going to change right um you know but it, we give you what the weather is doing and what it's supposed to be doing but you know there's there's variables out there that you just cannot account for right well and it, i mean so a perfect example of that, I don't know that we've talked about it on the podcast, maybe, but so Frank, my father-in-law, he used to um, hunt the spot that, you know, he needed, you know, uh, what did he, he needed a north wind, right? Well, he'd hunt there on a north wind, and he was getting busted every single time for these deer to, you know, the wind was blowing right in his face. Well, it was right along a highway, and so there was a draft mm -hmm. sucking that down there. So he ended up having to hunt the actually like a bad wind or like an off wind to to make it work. And I, you know, guys talk about that when you're hunting on a on a river or like somewhere else where there's a, a you know or a lot of edge, and and that you know is just something that you're going to have to take into account while you're hunting. All you can do is hunt the prevailing wind, and then for your spot you know, do what you need to do, right? Right, exactly. I mean, you're still going to be out there with your wind checked because, you know, there are those 
variables that are going to be different than what, you know, we're going to tell you or any weatherman. Um, you know, so it's just kind of getting out there and figuring it out. And I think, you know, I don't know, stuff like that bothers me. <laughs> like, I think, I just feel like, you know, people like that are just trying to pick something apart. Because it's like, you can't, you know, you should understand the thermals. Like, your, your, your app, you know, base map is great, but it's not, like, you still have to think about stuff, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you right. still I mean, have to use knowledge. I mean, yeah, we give you a lot of information, but we're all, you know, you still have to have some sort of knowledge about hunting and woodsmanship and, you know, whatever. You know, we're, we're doing ev- almost everything for you but pulling the trigger at this point. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, I don't know. What do you got coming up this season? What do you, What are you looking to forward to? It looks like you you know, killed some, we yeah, killed yeah. more than I have, and John's killed more than <laughs> me, so. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so I, you know, I, I tagged out on, on elk and mule deer in Wyoming, um, you know, and, and it'll be five, four weeks now until I get out to, you know, my property I hunt in, in southwest Wisconsin to start chasing deer with the bull, um, getting a lot of trail camera pictures, but everything's at night, um, you know, so I'm just waiting until the rut kicks in when when these bucks that are wandering around at night are are on their feet during the day walking around stupid. And you're um, you're one buck in Wisconsin, right? So no, no. no? You know, so I I can shoot two because I've got my archery tag and a rifle tag. Okay, and so I can I can shoot two bucks. And those don't cross over. No, nope. Okay. Technically, if I shoot, you know, I can bull hunt during rifle season, but I have to tag it with the rifle tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Michigan used to be like that, and they switched yes. everything to a combo license. So you can kill two bucks, but, you know, once you kill two bucks, it's done. I just bought my bought my licenses today. So I've got, I've got two buck tags, and I think I have, the state gave me eight doe tags Jeez. or something like that. Yeah, it's insane. And it's all, I mean, that's all based on the region of Wisconsin that I hunt. If I hunted in northern Wisconsin where there's no deer, I, I wouldn't have got any doe tags. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll be, like I said, I'll be out there probably first week in November chasing, chasing deer with the bow. And then a couple weeks later, I'll be back out there chasing with the rifle. Awesome. John, you haven't even bought your tags yet, probably, huh? I bought all my tags back in the spring. Oh, when you bought the turkey license? Yeah. Okay. And I do, I know that there is some leftover doe tags that in our county that last year I bought three and didn't fill any, but just having them in my pocket. I actually got a leftover general turkey tag for Muskegon County. Did you? So I can hunt private or public with. I didn't even put in for the fall turkey this year. I was like. It was leftover. Yeah. I didn't even look at leftovers. I was like, you know what? Screw them turkeys. I had the t- I got my tag last year and I did chase them around for a minute, but it was like I was just basically wasting my time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I I didn't even put in for fall turkey. It was the state of Wisconsin pissed me off again this year for spring turkey. For some reason, I'm on the every other year list for spring turkey. So this year, <laughs> I did not get my spring turkey tag. <laughs> and and of all years to not get it. You know, this would have been the year I really wanted it with with COVID and getting out of the damn house, right? You know, so I'm like, screw it, I'm not buying a fall turkey tag. Screw them. Yeah, yeah, I just have it because like a couple of the places where I hunt, they're like everywhere. Like today on my camera, like at three o'clock, it was just turkey, 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 turkey. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting a ton of pictures of turkeys and gonna, raccoons. You're gonna die. <laughs> uh, i'm gonna shoot at you either way one or the two yeah this one about, of the two this about the time you let one fly at one of them damn turkeys and you're gonna look over and it'll be like a nice buck staring at you like oh hey buddy how you doing uh, i'm out of here uh, <laughs> if, if you if you talk to our good buddy tom taylor he says that you know the deer don't really care because he shoots at every squirrel that comes by <laughs> like he actually I, if i remember correctly last year he had to crawl down and get all the arrows that were stuck in the ground yeah, to, to shoot at a deer. So, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? But That's an interesting story. <laughs> I mean, you know, what do you get? You get bored out there sometimes. You need practice. Right. 
I think the only time I ever shot at a squirrel with my bow was actually in Michigan. I used to hunt uh, down in Battle Creek. I, got, I had a buddy that lived in Battle Creek, and we'd do a little hunting. And I, I remember getting bored and shooting a squirrel. <laughs> and I didn't kill him. The arrow was in him, and he ran up a tree with my arrow in him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I had to wait for him to come down so I could get my dang arrow back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, John just killed some turkey. I never had one run off with my arrow, I don't think. Uh, I've shot a few squirrels, lots of chipmunks and red squirrels with the bow. Yeah. Yeah, I've shot a, I shot a lot of shit with my bow. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy Mark shot a grouse out there in Montana, and it flew off with its arrow in him. No way. That swear no to God. kidding. I was like, that bird just flew off with your arrow, and then we couldn't find it. <laughs> Could not find it. I'm like, well, someone's going to come along here and walk and see a freaking dead grouse with an arrow in its ass. You know, like, but, That's crazy! I cannot believe that a that a grouse would take an arrow, they and were, not die. Those the grouse. Well, there's like rough grouse out there, and then the blue grouse. I think they call them blue. The, yeah, blue grouse. They were a lot like the one I killed one blue grouse, and it was the size of a freaking chicken. Like this thing was huge. Like you, we freaking skinned it out and kept the drumsticks and everything. It was so big. <laughs> They're tasty. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, so. Nice. How long does that uh, uh, thing go? What are the dates on that again for the for the free uh, base map and and where can so, people get like download the app? So it'll be October eighth through October fourteenth. Uh, you can download the app on iTunes or Google Play. Uh, you know you do have to create an account, you know, with a username and password, basically your, your email address, and then uh, starting on the eighth, you'll have you know base map pro and, and our hunt research and eastman's data for free for a week and so it's it, it's kind of counterintuitive and i don't know why it is such but we've got a code so when you decide that you want to buy it for 20 percent off but you have to go online to basemap.com sign in sign up for pro and it's just code chronicles and you'll get 20 percent off that makes it like 24 bucks for the entire it sounds like when you if you can pick anywhere in the world uh, for wind uh, for the entire right. world uh, for a year. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for for twenty percent off, you can't beat getting all fifty states for a year. And I mean, I hate to you know undercut our code and uh, everything, but if you guys check on Camel Fire, you you guys have been on Camel Fire here like maybe. Once every other yeah. month or something. And yeah, so we've been, been on dirt there. Cheap on there. Yeah, we've been on there a couple times on on Thursdays for yeah, super cheap. So, I mean, that's something to think about. I know that a lot of people are, you, you know, we'll just try it and say, well, you know, for for twenty five bucks, you know, that's what I pay for Onyx for one, for state. one state. So I'll just add the whole thing and then I'll see if I like it. And I think that that's where. You know, we're getting a lot of people to switch over just because it's like you, you if you're going on one out of state trip, it's worth it. it's worth it. Right. You know, and, you know, if even if you're just going to say, OK, well, I, like for us or I mean, even, in, you know, yeah, I guess for us, because I got friends that are hunting Wisconsin that are hunting Ohio that hunt Missouri, you know, and it's like, well, if you if you're going to do that, you might as well, you know, just spend the money because it's, you know, it's it's very very hard to beat for the money. I mean, the, it's well worth it. Right. And we're, we're always trying to make it better. <laughs> All right. So grizzly deaths per capita. That's what we're looking for <laughs> on the next oh, update. Oh, I, th- I thought we were just going for grizzly ranges. <laughs> grizzly we ranges. Grizzly well, I mean, you know, if you want to make it exciting, you could have like little, you know how you got the little fire icon for like the active fires. You could have like a, body or something <laughs> oh boy <laughs> <laughs> well we, we you know if we're gonna throw in grizzly we might as well throw in wolf ranges too right <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know what the wolf attack of humans but i think that that would probably be great for the elk hunters because if there's wolves you know if there's wolves yeah. around you know they're going to probably want to avoid those areas Right. And, and John, I mean, you and I were definitely hunting in prime wolf and grizzly bear country. It's amazing that there are any elk around. Yeah. Yeah. And they were talking like, well, the cows were completely silent, but the bulls were bugling like crazy. 
So yeah, you know the Bulls were bugling. I mean, I don't know. It seemed to get worse by the day as far as the Bulls bugling. I mean, our my first day of, of hunting, we heard a lot of cows and a lot of bugling, and it just got worse by the day. I mean, it was super. I mean, you got the same weather. It was super warm during the day. Oh yeah, it was hot. I mean, it's literally brutal. blazing. But yeah, we had some. We had quite a few days where it was just completely silent. But then when we got into it and we found where the elk were actually hiding out away from the hunters, <clears throat> the bulls were were pretty active and 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 uh, nice. talking. But the cows were not nice. So I learned that the hard way on a nice bull. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a little cow call, and he's like, "What? <laughs> Gone." <laughs> nice. Uh, so. It's all about the learning experience, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I listened. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I could probably uh, recite Paul Medell's, uh slow play, uh, word for word, like, in every podcast he's ever. Because that's like the whole way out. That's all I listened to for you know, like the twenty some twenty eight hours or whatever it took me to get out there. That's I just over, over, over. <laughs> I had it down, <laughs> but. They weren't they weren't playing the so slow play. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, nice. Oh man. Nice. Well, Ed, I think that's kind of all we got for this evening. You know, so if there's anything else you want to throw in, um, you know, for for base map or where people can find it, you know, social, any of that stuff. Um, yeah, you know, so obviously our website, basemap.com. Uh, you can download the app on iTunes and Google Play. And we do have social, uh, you know, base map hunting and fishing on on Facebook and base map underscore hunt fish on Instagram. Cool. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll definitely be looking forward to the the updates. And like I said, for for the whitetail, I mean, it's it's cool. Like I, I've been using it. I was using it today. <laughs> so Yeah, I can't wait to perfect. get into it deeper and get it all figured out. So well, thanks for having me on, gentlemen. Yeah, no, and like I said, we'll we'll make sure that this gets out for for everybody so that they can take full advantage of the, the free week for you. So. Excellent. Sure. All righty.